Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia and welcome back to the 5 part series covering the skill trees of generic characters in the game. This video is part 3 and we'll be covering the Vanguard class. If you missed out on part 1 and part 2 covering the Champion and Commander classes, please don't forget to go back and check those out. Now let's jump straight into the skill tree. All generic Vanguards will have the same skill tree as the one shown here. You always start with one of these three active or passive abilities at level 1, an additional skill that is linked by the lines to your starting skill. After that, you will gain a new skill point with each level up, and you can unlock any new skill as long as they are connected to existing skills. Since your character's build will always be anchored by which of these three active or passive abilities you start with, we will start the guide by focusing on these three. In the order that they appear on the skill tree, we have Flames of the Phoenix, Final Rush, and Roar of the Beast. Flames of the Phoenix is a melee combat ability that does 3.8k in splash damage. This is comparable to the Binding Fury for champions. Whereas Binding Fury does 7.5k damage with a 60 second cooldown, the Flames of the Phoenix does 3.8k damage with only a 30 second cooldown. This is great for both clearing out enemy units and for winning duels. Next, we have the Final Rush, which is a passive ability that grants 50% movement speed and 50% charge speed if the battle outcome is decided. So, to my understanding of this ability is that once you have won the battle, you are now faster at chasing down routing troops. Since this sounds pretty bad, I have yet to unlock this skill in any of my games. The only use I see here is to chase down routing cavalries that you otherwise can't chase down, but that seems like a waste of a skill point to me. Finally, we have my favorite vanguard ability, the Roar of the Beast, which is an active debuff ability that reduces nearby enemy morale by 18 points. He has a range of 15, 50 meters and a cooldown of 60 seconds. Whereas commanders use their ability to grant Unbreakable to turn the tide of the battle, vanguards are designed to crash into enemy waves and reduce their morale with this ability. It does zero damage, but because you can route full health units by destroying their morale, you are actually doing tons of damage without even knowing it. Now that we have discussed these three active and passive abilities, let's continue by looking at the six skills attached to them as shown here. Now these six skills are all instinct skills in that they only provide instinct stats. The two skills in the middle are also vanguard unique skills, while the other four skills you can find in other classes. Once again, in the order that they appear on the skill tree, these six skills are Vengeance, Reach, Fury, Passion, Intensity, and Dignity. Let's dig into these. Vengeance enables Scare, which is a passive ability that reduces nearby enemy morale. It also boosts the entire army's morale by 10 points when in own territory, when the vanguard is the commanding general. Scare once again plays into the role of a daring vanguard turning the battle by himself as he crashed into the enemy formations. Next, we have everyone's favorite commanding general's ability in Reach. This grants plus one available army if the vanguard is prime minister, heir, or faction leader, but more importantly it adds 25% campaign movement range if the vanguard is the commanding general. Nothing beats speed in war, so this is a must-have skill for any commanding general. Fury also grants 10 points in morale, when the vanguard is a commanding general, only this time it is when you're in enemy territory. It also gives its own retinues plus 25 charge bonus. This synergizes perfectly with the shock cavalry that is often paired with vanguards as the majority of their damage come from charging into enemies. Next, we have passion, which unlocks the conscription assignment and more importantly, adds 25% melee damage for all shock cavalrys in the vanguard's own retinue. Intensity enables mighty knockback for the vanguard himself. This makes the vanguard charges more devastating and grants plus 25 charge speed to own retinue. So it's pretty clear with all these buffs, 
you should stack your vanguards with six retinues of shock cavalry. Lastly, we have dignity, which enables discipline for the vanguard's retinue. This allows the retinue to not suffer any morale damage if the vanguard dies on the battlefield. Hopefully, this will not be relevant, but importantly, discipline also allow your retinues to rally back more often from wavering. This is a key uh, point as shock cavalries tend to take heavy damages in fights. So if they go from wavering to routing, you lose out on a lot of potential damage. Now that we talked about all the instinct skills, let's turn our focus onto the other six skills that are on the Vanguard skill tree. These six skills are endurance, guile, flexibility, mobility, zeal, and clarity. As you can see from the color code and stats being boosted, these are skills taken from other classes. Endurance and flexibility both provide resolve, so they are champion skills. Mobility and clarity both provide authority, so they are commander skills. Well, guile is a strategist skill, and zeal is a sentinel skill. If you've seen the previous parts of this series, you know what's up. But if you haven't, please know that every class has three active and passive skills, six skills focused on their primary stat, and six skills borrowed from other classes. We will not be discussing these skills in great detail here, as we did with the six instinct skills earlier, because we don't want to repeat ourselves, since these skills will all be discussed as part of their own class. For example, we already talked about endurance and flexibility in part one when we were covering the champion class, so instead, we'll be taking a more detailed look at all the different buffs a vanguard can receive from their skills sorted by their different roles. Here, I have listed all the buffs vanguard can receive as a commanding officer in the army, as heir, leader, or prime minister, as the administrator of a commandery, and others which include items like enabling abilities, own army boost, own retinue boost, or just buffs to the vanguard himself. Looking at the list, we can first eliminate Vanguard as administrator. Their only contribution here would be a 25% discount in building upkeep. Where the Vanguard really shine is in their ability as commanding officers. As you can see from the highlights, most of their ability are geared for the battlefield, and I have provided a full build skill tree here shown for your reference. Notice how I skip Final Rush. If you happen to know a good use of this ability, please let me know in the comment section below because right now I feel like it's just a useless ability. While the Vanguard truly shines in its role on the battlefield, it can be made into an okay leader, heir, or prime minister. If you look at the buffs they have, the only one worthy is the 25% discount in redeployment cost. But being a leader, heir, or prime minister does not restrict you from being on the battlefield, so it is still doable for a vanguard. I have highlighted the necessary skill here. As you can see, it overlaps quite a bit with its battlefield build. I hope you find this guide helpful, and if you enjoy the video, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below to support the channel. The next part of this series will be covering Sentinels, and will drop tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Hope you all have an awesome day. Bye!